The Osher Cricket Club are holding an emergency meeting as a fallout to the Asim Rafiq investigation continues. You heard from uh, Julian Knight, MP, the chair of the DCMS, just a short time ago. The 16th of this month is the key date for all of this because that is when everybody involved in this racism row, which has rocked the sport of cricket, will be in front of MPs uh, in Parliament. So what do we know? In the last 12 hours, we've seen the ECB suspend at Yorkshire from holding international matches. Former England captain Michael Vaughan has now denied allegations in his own newspaper column this morning. Allegations of racism made against him by Asim Rafiq. And in the, the last uh, hour or so, Yorkshire, the club chairman at Yorkshire, Roger Hutton, has said enough's enough for me and he's resigned from his role. We're joined here in studio by uh, Talk Sports cricket editor John Norman. John, good morning to you. Good morning. This is the eye of a storm. Um, let me put the same question that I put to uh, Julian Knight MP a short time ago. John, is this fast becoming an irreparable situation for Yorkshire Cricket Club? Well, uh, I was listening um, to George DeBell on the show yesterday. George is a close friend of mine uh, and I've been speaking to him about this story for about a year. He was of the opinion it would take Yorkshire County Cricket Club 15 years to get, up, to get past this. And I listened to the show yesterday I thought, poof. That's a statement. He was, he's right. And the only reason it's going to take 15 years is if they actually deal with this situation properly. Um, it's, it's got to be root and branch. It's got to be um, at boardroom level, but it's also got to be transparent. Um, and the message has got to go from the top of York, Yorkshire. And it doesn't stop at the gates, those famous Yorkshire ca- uh, County Cricket Club gates. It goes all the way through the league structure. The message has got to be clear from Yorkshire that they are an inclusive cricket club. That's it. Mm. And they've got to have the words and then the actions to follow. If they do that, then they can get past this. But it will take a generation. We, we were saying yesterday, Simon, heads will roll. Heads yeah. are going to roll. Inevitably. I mean, there's going to be blood in the walls at this DCMS yeah. committee meeting in yeah, the 16th. Yeah. And, um, rightly, and rightly so to some extent. And rightly so. And, and and the idea that Yorkshire didn't handle this and didn't understand the gravity of what they're dealing with and didn't look at the evidence with a clear set of minds, understanding the climate we live in, understanding the dynamics of what can and can't be said in, in society. And then you move it up and say, it's almost incomprehensible to me that the ECB would take from Yorkshire Cricket Club, no, we're not going to let you see the report. It's almost incomprehensible to me that the Players' Union, the PCA, would take an answer from a cricket club knowing they knew the subject matter they knew what was being alleged, they knew what was being said, and they probably knew that the body of evidence, because I would imagine that the, the player involved has spoken to other people, i.e. his union, and spoke to them about the content of what he was alleging. So it's incomprehensible to me that all these people that are now running for the hills and sanctioning this cricket club have sat there saying, well, we were happy with being told by Yorkshire that the report that they had produced we weren't able to see. Mm. I find that a degradation of duty, a degradation of responsibility, and they are culpable in yes. Because yeah. uh, what we've got here is a level of management at Yorkshire County Cricket Club, which beggars belief in their incompetence of understanding the blue touch paper that was in their hands. It was their gift to say, the moment this terminology was used, this particular terminology, irrespective of what the independent report wanted to categorise it has, we have a duty of responsibility, if nobody else, to ourselves, but to the individual that's making these allegations to say, bang, we need to deal with this. There's going to be high-profile casualties, or well, are everyone, they not, Everyone knew that Roger Hutton was going to have to go. Right, I so he's ima- gone. I would imagine it's not difficult to follow the chief executive. Now, former England captain Michael Vaughan this morning denying allegations of racism made against him by Rafiq. But, but that's a different discussion entirely, because Michael Vaughan's got to rub his own boat. If Michael Vaughan is absolutely unequivocal in his position that he didn't make these observations, if it were me, I don't know what the framework of this situation is given the nature of it being reported in the inquiry, but if it were me and I didn't say these things, I would leave no no stone unturned to defend my reputation because this is reputational damage given the climate that we're in, given the subject matter, which is very difficult to recover from and everyone will run away from it. Yeah. And of course we'll see, understandably, a lot of these sponsors like Nike, who by the way, have hypocrisy at the centre because they run sweatshops and they run the Nike Oregon project and all the things they've done, running away and distancing themselves from these things. And I understand why, but we have to look at the reality of what's happening at Yorkshire Cricket Club. The Michael Vaughan stuff is a little bit of a sideshow and he'll have to deal with his own issues. And if it were me, I would be issuing defamation claims if I didn't say these things. 
but the whole management of Yorkshire County Cricket Club, the whole management of the ECB and the PCA need to have a bloody good look at themselves because they need to grow up and understand the climate and the times that we're living in. For them to have accepted Yorkshire marking their own homework, producing a report that no one can see, is incredible. And of course then we've got the DCMS. And I do think your questioning was very pertinent because I do think they've already prejudged. They've already made their minds up because it makes good sound bites for the media, for their positioning. They've got to do these things, but they haven't read the report. And the most interesting time will be November the 16th, when everybody gets to see an unredacted, hopefully, 100-page report, and we get to see it in its entirety. And the horrors that await will be for all those that deserve it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.